Okay. You know, we're talking about identity restoration. All right. Now, this is going to be fresh. I, I didn't see this coming, but the Holy Spirit was like, take them to Joshua chapter 10. Now, I, Joshua chapter 10 is 40 verses. We're not going to go ahead and read through all of them, but we're going to touch some high points. And there's some, some thoughts that God wants to put into our mind to get into our thinking, to get into our speech, to just get into our expectations. And then, and then God just bless us and touch us with the boldness to believe in this identity restoration. The boldness, not only to look at it and accept it, but the boldness to say, God, show us how to walk in this. How do we, how do we manifest the, the very identity and the, and the very swag, the very authority that Jesus walked in in our everyday lives? That's our goal. We're saying to God, God, show us how to do this. You know, we, we, we serve an awesome God. God calls us more than conquerors. God calls us kings and priests. God calls us the head and not the tail. And, and so we now, as God's children, we've got to now look at that and reconcile those truths, those statements of, of identity from God. We've got to look at all of those statements and promises and commands and, and all of those precepts and principles and make a decision. God, that's me. And God, show me how to walk in it. Show me how to walk in it in my everyday life, in my everyday circumstances. Show me how to walk in that when I go to the grocery store. Show me how to walk, walk in that when I'm at the gym. Show me how to walk in that when I'm at work. Give me the boldness to manifest the identity of Jesus Christ, the identity of deity. And let me tell you something, beloved, you are deity in the eyes of God. You are connected to deity. You got the divine touch on you. You are, you are, watch this here. You are not deity like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is, but you are the God of this world system. That's where God gave you the authority. He gave you the ability to be the ruler, the controller. He gave you the ability to literally walk in dominion in this life. So Satan, who is the God of this world, the world system, he's under our feet. He's been defeated. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to show you some things tonight. I'm telling you right now, you know, uh, we got this. We are little authorities of God walking in the earth. We, we are, we are, we are members and extensions of the glory of God in the earth. That's our identity. And that's, a, that's, a, that's something that we are say, God, teach us how to walk in it. Teach us and help us to understand the magnitude of it. Teach us and help us to understand the, re, the, 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 re, the re restored authority and dominion and power that you paid to give back to us. And then help us, oh God, Show us, coach us, show us how to express that recipe, that express that formula that Jesus walked in. All right, so now let's go back to identity restoration. All right, our, our, our identity has been restored. Now, I want to hit this definition before we go to Joshua chapter 10, restoration one more time. All right, because it's a powerful thing. Look at this here. It means two things when we talk about restoration. When we talk about identity, identity basically is the distinguishing character or characteristics of an individual. Character is powerful. When we start looking at the character of Jesus, we start looking at all that he manifested, all in how he did things, all in why he did things. Oh my God, it's just powerful. So we talk about the attributes. That's what we're capturing from Jesus, the attributes. We're capturing the features of Jesus, those, those qualities that, that, that Jesus said, okay, that's the glory of God manifesting, the character, the, the qualities of the Father. Jesus says, I'm manifesting them. He manifested all of them. So now, when we start talking about our identity, we're talking about that which distinguishes us as, as biblical Christians, we that, that have gone beyond a religious experience with God, and we now have a relational 
experience with God. That means we pray because we love talking to God. We praise because we love giving God the praise, the glory, and the honor. We represent because we know who we are. We are children of the Most High God. We are kings and priests unto God. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, the royal priesthood of God in the earth. Oh, hallelujah. And we family. So when we start talking about, you know what I mean, those traits, those characteristics of Jesus that we see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then throughout all of the New Testament, as the apostle Paul and Peter and James and these guys started explaining their experience with God and explaining what Jesus talked about and how Jesus, you know, exampled us and then how Jesus gave us instruction on how to live the overcoming life, how to live the more than conqueror life, how to live that life that identifies with Jesus, more than a conqueror, the resurrected, hallelujah. So now, restoration, two definitions, all of this character that we're learning about Jesus, all of these attributes that we're learning about Jesus, and now we're now accepting and making changes in our lives and we're applying the precepts and the principles of Jesus Christ's life into our own life. We're, we're doing that divine makeover. Watch this here. That word restoration means two things. I'm going to read them first real quick. The action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. That's definition number one. I'm not making this up. This, this, is, this is what restoration means. This is what God has done for, for humanity. And, and it is realized and, and, and we that has accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we that have accepted the Bible as truth, the truth of God, this has happened to us. This is, this is real functional truth. This is reality from God to us. We now got to respond to this. Look at this here, second definition. The return of a hereditary monarch to a throne, a head of state to government. The return or the return of a regime to power. Now let's break this down. Then we're going to run over to Joshua chapter 10 real quick. Look at this here. So now the action of returning something to a former owner. That's Jesus dying on the cross, raising from the grave. It was that action that was necessary for humanity to have the option of identity restoration of accepting the identity that God had already ordained for us that we once had lost through disobedience and obedience to Satan, disobedience to God, obedience to Satan. Adam and Eve spoke for the entire human race when they obeyed Satan and disobeyed God. And it plunged the entire human race into a separation from God and then a new nature in their spiritual expression. We lost the expression, the spiritual nature of God, and we took on the spiritual nature of Satan, which is sinful, evil, wicked, selfish, hateful. But now, through the new birth, God has given us the opportunity to express a new identity. See, we, we, we lost our touch when Adam and Eve disobeyed God. We lost the fullness of our place. We lost our our state and condition as being the gods of this world. The dominion expressors of God in this world. But Jesus brought it back. He purchased it back for us. I don't know about you. I'm, going, I'm learning how to walk in this. I'm learning how to get this operational. And it's happening. And it's happening in your life too. So look at this here. The return of a hereditary monarch to a throne the return of a head of state to government, the return of a regime to power. This is what restoration means. So now your identity, my identity, our identity has undergone the restoration process of almighty God. So now definition number one, let's break this down. Then we go into Joshua. The action of returning something to a former owner. Ha, oh, hallelujah. Wow. Do you know that when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, that Satan became our owner? No, Satan was not our creator. Elohim is our creator. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they are our creator. That never changed in the loss of our identity when we 
when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and obeyed Satan, they lost place, they lost position, and they lost the condition of divineness, the condition of the glory of God, the, the condition, they lost the touch of God. They lost it. And they took on the opposite nature of God. They took on Satan's nature. They took on the nature of sin. And, and it was passed on to us by a hereditary change. A spiritual hereditariness took on a whole new identity in us, a whole new expression in us. Now we're sinful. Now we're separated from God. But thank God for Jesus Christ because he died on the cross. He paid the price. He suffered. He went to hell. Then he rose from the grave after he paid the price so that we could become and experience that identity restoration of God. We could get back into that place, back into that condition, back into, watch this here, the, the submission of ownership to God. Satan owned us. But that's why the Bible says you are not your own, but you've been bought with a price. Jesus purchased us. The Father God purchased us. The Holy Spirit purchased us. We've been bought with a price. And that price was the life, the death, the, 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 the whole sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the whole sacrifice of Elohim for humanity. And we see that poignantly through Jesus Christ. That's why we identify with Jesus, man. He paid the price for us. So watch this here. The action of returning something to a former owner. We've been returned to our former owner and creator, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Yahweh Elohim. We have been returned, and we have not only been returned through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of Jesus. Look at this next definition. We have now experienced the action of returning to that place of authority, that place of authority that place and position of authority through Jesus Christ, through the Father God, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' death on the cross restored us back to a place of identity with God, identity of God, and identity through God. Now, we got to reconcile that with ourselves. We got to make the choice to let go of some some satanic act, identity, some weakness identity, some doubtness out identity, oh, doubtness is not a word, but doubtness identity, faithless identity. No, no. Prosperity less identity. We're, we're abandoning all of that. And we're taking on the identity of Jesus Christ. We're taking on the godly identity, the divine identity of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right, so watch this here. The action of returning something to a former condition. Hallelujah. Look, okay, I, I get it. Our, our flesh, we got to control our flesh. We got to control the thoughts that we allow to come into our mind and become a part of our identity. So we got to cast down some thoughts. That's what Corinthians says. Paul said, look, casting down every thought Every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is our identity when that knowledge speaks directly to who we are and what God has made us. That's why that scripture that says in, in 1 Corinthians 5, we are new creatures. We are new creatures. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's identity change. And I'm sure glad that God revealed that to us gave us a choice. You have a choice. I have a choice. We have a choice. I choose to identify with Jesus. I choose to identify with the Father. I choose to identify with the power of the Holy Spirit. I know you do too. That's the best choice. That's the best identity in the universe. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So look at this here. The action of returning something to a former condition. Let me break this here down. Every day of your life, the more you get closer to God, the more you get closer to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, through, watch this here, here's the vehicle, through prayer, through studying the Word, through accepting what the Word of God says about you as truth, 
your truth. Also, giving God praise and thanksgiving for doing it. Accepting the fact that the Holy Spirit is your teacher. He's our teacher. And, and if we ask him to open our understanding to be able to see the importance of our identity restoration, the impact of our identity restoration, and the glory of our identity restoration on every area of life. Because God has spoken to every area of human existence. And God has made promises. And we got to say to God, God, show us how it works, why it works, and then show us how to build our faith to great faith status so that when we speak to mountains, they will be removed. When we speak to problems, they will be removed in Jesus' name. When we speak to our success, when we speak to our, our future, it will happen because we have the identity of Christ, we understand the restoration process of that identity, and we are expressing it right now. And we are expressing it in the face of whatever condition, in the face of whatever current place and position physically, we know where we are spiritually. We know what we have. We know our condition spiritually. We've been born again. We've been made brand new in our spirit. We now are renewing our mind. We are thinking different, talking different. We are operating in the principles and the precepts of Almighty God. And God is backing every promise, backing every prayer. He's backing your praise with a manifestation of their glory and their power. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can't lose. It's impossible. When your identity and your understanding of restoration is operational and active. It's kind of like faith. You can't have dead faith. Our faith is alive. Our faith is moving. Our faith, our faith is like the word of God. It's sharp, it's quicker, it's moving, it's growing. It's stable. It's eternal. You know, like the truth of God. And God says, if you operate according to the formula, according to the recipe of Jesus, you're going to have the results that Jesus had in your circumstance and in your situation. When we go to Joshua, they was facing a different circumstance and situation. They was facing a different experience. But the power of God worked for them, and the power of God is working for you. We're going to see how we can change the scenario. We can change the environmental conditions and make the principles and the precepts of God fit that scenario. And what scenario is that? God delivering us. God giving us the ability to put our feet on top of every enemy that shows up in our lives. Now, that's some good news. That's a shouting moment right there. That's a hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God moment. And I just want to, I just want to say this and get it out the way. Tog, T-O-G, there's four aspects. I'm just going to deal with these four aspects of the Tog. And, and, and you got the Tog. You are the Tog. What's the Tog? T-O-G, you are the temple of God. Corinthians says the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Father lives in you. The Lord Jesus lives in you. Your body is the temple of God. You got the truth of God. You got the truth. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So talk, truth of God. You got the truth of God. You are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. We have the truth of God. Ooh, I'm starting to get excited. I'm, I'm really trying to calm down here right? Not only do we have the temple, we are the temple of God and we have the truth of God, but we have the touch of God. You got the touch of God on your life. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Don't be timid. Stand up and speak like a child of God. Stand up and speak like a relational child of God, like a more than conqueror. Humble, yes, before God, but stand up and release your faith in your future, the future that God has planned for you. you. You are the temple of God. You have the truth of God. And you got the touch of God. And not only do you, do you have the touch of God, but you have the talents of God in you. 
You got the talent. We got the talents of God in us. And we are starting to express the talents of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And every time we step out on that word, we step out on the truth of God. We pray. We pray for others. We see prayers getting answered. Man, you got three things. This is what I call the trifecta. When you respond to the touch of God, when you respond to the truth of God, when you respond to the talents of God, because you are the temple of God, you just simply, every time God do something good, people recognize it. You just simply say glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's the trifecta. That's that spiritual trifecta. And I'm telling you right now, and the more you rock, the more you rock like that, God just keeps on pouring out blessing all over, all over your life. You changing every single day. Your identity, my identity, our identity is changing. It's firming up. The identity of God is becoming firm and solid in our lives. Oh, glory to God. This is good. This is good. Watch this here. Now, uh, restoration. So the first definition, the action of returning something to a former owner, returning something to a former place, returning something to a former condition. Your owner is God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You are owned by God. You are God's son. You are God's daughter. You are God's child. God, through the, the death, the birth, the resurrection of Jesus, you have been returned to the former place of authority and dominion and righteousness and peace and joy. I could go down that list. It's a long list of what God has re returned you to, returned us to. And I'm loving all of it, but you gotta accept this. You gotta accept this, because see, if you don't accept it, then it's not gonna work for you. You, you. you tie God's hands behind his back. God can't do, he can't, he can't reveal this to the fullest to where it changes your life and it changes your destiny until you believe it. I gotta believe it too. You know, just because I preach this don't mean that I get a pass on some things. No, I got to release my faith just like you got to release your faith. We all, we got to release our faith. We got to take our mind and choose to believe that God can do it. And that's a decision. But that decision is based in faith. Now, when we talk about faith, listen, faith is not this spooky thing. All faith means pistis in the Greek. It means confidence, conviction, and persuasion. Literally, being confident that God can do what they say they can do. Being fully convinced that God can do what they say they can do. Being fully persuaded, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter how many coming against you, God is able to get you to the manifestation, the fulfillment of their promises. You pray it. Don't be scared to say it. Don't be scared to pray it. You pray the promise of God and you release faith in it. You release confidence in it. Now you have to be patient. You got to give God some time to work. It all depends on the situations you believe in for. Give God some time to work. But you need to understand something, that God is working all the time. Bringing what you prayed, bringing what you've released your faith for to your reality. As a part of this, re this restoration package. I see this whole, this identity restoration. This is like a total makeover. Look at this here again. The action of returning something or someone to a former owner, to a former place, or to a former condition. Your condition is getting better and better each and every day because your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with the Father, your relationship with the Holy Spirit, it's getting better and better each and every day. Yeah, I'm gonna say it, you've fallen in love with God. Elohim has become your love interest. That's why you pray more. That's why you praise more. That's why you read in your Bible more. And if you ain't doing them things, you need to, you need to quit fasting in a hurry. Start adding that to your daily. For real. Your daily routine ought to be filled with, 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 with regular prayer, regular praise, regular hearing the word, reading the word, regular. Okay? All right. That's how, that's how you cultivate relationship. That's how you learn who God is, what God is all about, and then how God does things. That's relationship. All right, look at this here. Look at this here. The second definition of, of, of restoration, this is powerful. The return of a hereditary monarch to a throne. Did you know that you was a hereditary monarch of God? 
We are hereditary monarchs of God. When we talk about hereditary, that means we got the same DNA. You and I, we have the same spiritual DNA as God does. We got the same spiritual essence as Jesus, the same spiritual essence as the Father, the same spiritual essence as the Holy Spirit, all because of Jesus Christ, all because we put our faith in Jesus. Jesus paid the price to get us our DNA back, our spiritual genealogy back. We, we have the genome of God in us, in our spirit. Hallelujah. Look at this here. The return of a, hered a, a hereditary monarch to a throne. Through Jesus, we family with God again. Not just creation of God. We family of God. You family of God. Let that change your thinking when you deal with the devil and his crazy kids. And these crazy scenarios that the Satan is concocting to try to put man under more stress and more, more aggravation, more tension. No, walk in peace. It's your hereditary nature to walk in the peace of God. It's your hereditary nature to walk in the joy of God. It's your hereditary nature to walk in the dominion of Almighty God. And it's time for you and I, it's time for us to express it. I'm on it. I, listen, I'm like, God, how do we express this in a humble way, but in a truthful way? It changes your whole life. It changes your whole perspective. It changes how you interact with challenges, how you interact with delays. You sit there cool, calm, and collective in the Holy Ghost. Kind of like Elisha, when, when he was, when all of these armies came up against him, Gehazi was freaking out. Gehazi was Elisha's servant. And, and Elisha's just sitting there cool and calm. You got, you got tens of thousands of the enemy surrounding him. His servant Gehazi was acting wild. He was freaking out, stressed out. This cat, you know what I mean? And then Elisha said, Father, open his eyes and let him see what I see. And you got to read that story in the book of Kings. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, when 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 God opened Gehazi his eyes, he saw the angels in chariots of fire surrounding all of the human warriors that assembled with these kings to come and try to kill Elisha. Man, you got God on your side. God is with you. I said, God is with you. If I was going to title this message, I would title this message, God is with you. So watch this here. The return of a hereditary monarch to a throne, the return of a head of state of government. Do you know that in the original, before Adam and Eve messed up, they were the heads of state of the government of God in the earth. Then they disobeyed God and they transferred all of that head of state to Satan. Satan is now the head of state in the government of the world system. That's why the world going crazy. They manifest in Satan's identity. You know, all of this stuff, all of this homosexuality, this gay, this transgender, that's Satan. Google the Baphomet. Google the Baphomet. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a weird looking thing, but that's Satan. And it's male and female gender expressing. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the Baphomet. I'll do a study on the Baphomet one day. But if you look at the Baphomet, that's Satan right there. That is the expression of Satan. And that's what these big corporations and politicians and, and all is here in the entertainment industry, that's how they get down. That's the identity that they're expressing. I was watching a TV show last night and these two guys started kissing. I was like, ugh. Looked at another show. I like the show. It's got action, it's got, it's got suspense, it's, you know? And these two women, they kissing. I was like, ugh. But they express in Satan's identity. Satan's identity is wicked, evil, and people, people are just caught up in, in, in his spell. And it is up to us to bring that truth with love and humility, but bring that truth. Hey, I'm not saying you bad people, but I'm saying Satan got your mind on a whole nother identity expression, and it is not expressing the identity of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to need boldness to rock this message. All right, watch this here. So restoration, the return of a regime to power. We, through Jesus Christ, 
have been restored back to power in God, but it only works through Jesus' name. It only works through faith in Jesus' name. And when that faith is built up to great faith status, nothing the enemy has can stop it. All right, Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost said, take this, watch this here. Go with me real quick. Go to Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. God is with you. God is with me. God is with us. Everything that you do, everywhere you go, remember, you are the temple of God. You have the truth of God. You possess the touch of God. And you have the talents of God. Literally, you're the Bacog, B-C-O-G. You are the business card of God in the earth. You open your mouth and start dropping verses and principles and precepts of God. You're going to bring life to people. You're going to bring refreshing to people. You're going to bring joy to people. Don't think that when you start speaking the word or you start expressing your identity in Jesus Christ that people are turned off. No, I'm telling you right now, there will be more people that will be turned on. Right, I'm going to give you one. I was talking to this, 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 this customer service rep, and, and we were talking about some things, and, 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 and they gave me a real sweet situation. And I said, I said, I said, excuse me. I said, sir, hold on. I got to say this here. I got to get it out because it's about to explode in me. I said, glory to God. Just like this here. I said it in the same tone. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I got to say this here. I'm not crazy, but thank you, Jesus. I said, you've done me good today. You know what this guy said to me? He said, sir, you made my day. I really need that. I'm telling you, people need the truth of God spoken from the heart of a child of God that's in a relationship where that power can flow, where the touch of God that, that God's touched you with can be released and, and God can touch somebody else because God used you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, man. All right. So watch this here. Joshua chapter 10. Now, this is some of the things we're going to look at through Joshua chapter 10. I'm going to jump all around because I can't read through all of the verses. First of all, I don't have the time. All right. So first thing we want you to understand, number one, is that God is with you. Number two, that God is fighting for you. I'm telling you right now, child of God, you that have identified with the restoration process and you have identified with Jesus Christ as the provider of that identity change, the provider of that identity restoration, God is fighting for you. The Father's fighting for you. The Holy Spirit is fighting for you. The angels of God, they're fighting for you to win to express the identity of Jesus Christ. That's winning spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially. Look at this here. God will do what, listen, if you believe God for any promise, God will do everything for you, even up to making the sun stand still in the middle of your battle. He will make the situation pause so that you can get the victory. All right, Joshua chapter 10 now. Don't make me go to Nassau. Nassau found that we're missing a day in space. I don't know how they did that, but I heard somebody say that before. Look at this here. No, look at this here. You need to understand this here. Number four, that God will bless you, strengthen you to put your feet on the necks of all of your enemies. Now, I'm not just talking physical human enemies, but I'm talking about the enemies of fear, the enemy of depression, the enemy of stress, the enemy of lack, the enemy of sickness, the enemy of worry. God says, I'm, gonna, I will, I'm strengthening you. I'm showing you, I'm teaching you the principles, the recipe, the very formula of Jesus, the precepts that Jesus rocked and operated in. I'm teaching them to you so that you can put your feet on the neck of your enemies. All right, Joshua chapter 10. Go with me real quick. I'm going to jump through some verses now. Listen, you got to read Joshua chapter 10 yourself, but you're going to read it from a different lens right now. If you've ever read Joshua chapter 10, tonight you're going to see a different lens. You're going to see a different spin. The spin is not a different interpretation. It's just a deeper look. We're going to literally go into and look at what these words mean. And I'm just going to paraphrase tonight because really, I'm telling you, this is going to turn you on. And this is what God said to Joshua. This is what God said to Joshua through Moses. Moses, Moses mentored and tutored Joshua. Now Joshua is now mentoring and tutoring the elders and the leaders of Israel and especially the warriors. Oh, God's talking to warriors tonight. If you identify with Jesus Christ, you are a warrior. 
If you accept the identity restoration of God, you are God's warrior in the earth. You are God's soldier in the earth. Don't make me go to Paul and Timothy. He said to Timothy, he said, look, war, a good warfare. You are a soldier. Don't get entangled with the craziness of this world. But keep your identity in Christ. Keep your identity in the place, the condition that God has put in you and put on you. Put your, put your faith and your trust that the Father God, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they are your new owners. You don't have to take no static from Satan. You don't have to take no static, and you ain't got to be subject to his attacks. He's going to attack, but now we arming up. We coming with a different identity right now. All right, watch this here. Verse 8, mark this out. All right, I'm going to jump now, okay? The deal is Joshua and the children of Israel, they helping out some heathen that tricked them into a covenant, and the covenant was binding. You need to understand something about binding covenants. Our covenant with God is binding. That means whatever God said that he would do for us, God's got to do it for us if we believe it. If you believe it, you will receive it. But if you doubt it, you will go without it. That's why we get in doubt all the way out of our situation and scenario, out of our heart, out of our thinking, out of our talking, out of our behavior. Look at this here. And the Lord said, now, now watch this. This is, this is God talking to jo Joshua. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear them not. And he's all these kings that then came up and attacked Gibeon. Gibeon is a heathen nation. They trick Israel into a, a, a contract. So now that means if they get attacked, Israel got to step up and attack. And, and this, is, this is what Joshua is doing. He's honoring that contract. So it's it. But now watch how God, watch God, okay? And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear them not, talking about the enemy kings, fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Now you got to understand something about faith talk. God says, fear them not. I have delivered them into thy hand. As this conversation is going on, nothing physically has changed. Changed. Physically, they're not in the hands of Joshua. But God spoke from the spirit realm and said, this is what I'm going to do. And Joshua had to believe it. God always speaks from the standpoint of now. Not future. He'll speak to the future. But God is always operating out of the now. And that's why faith has got to be now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews 11. And you and I got to grab a hold of that concept so that we can operate the principles and the precepts of God so that we can manifest and express this identity. We do it through faith. And then what we say, the rest of the physical realm's got to catch up to what we've said in Jesus' name. All right, real quick. That was real quick. And, and, and what's it? And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. And this is what God is saying to you. Your situation may be different. You may not be fight, facing five enemy kings, but you're facing some other things. And God says not one of them things is going to be able to put their hand on you. Not one of those things is going to be able to stand before you permanently. I don't care what it is, fear, doubt, sickness, poverty, you name it. Enemies, jealous people, envious people, they're not going to be able to stand before you. The glory of God is growing in your life steadily. All right, watch this here. Watch this here. Verse 10. And the Lord discomforted them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gideon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horon and smote them to Azekah and unto Mekadesh or Mekada. Let me tell you something. Your God, the one that you identify with, knows how to beat down your enemies. This is God doing this. Look at this here. And it came to pass, verse 11, as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Haran, that was, listen to this, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. They were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. What does God say? God says, look, you got to do your part. Fighting off your enemies. You just got to stand. You got to speak to them. 
And you got to obey what God tells you to do in the midst of your circumstances and situation. But the Bible says that what God did for these folks with hailstones on their enemy, God is going to do that with their word on your problems in your situation. Hey, listen, I like this here. This just turned me on. I was listen, this is fresh. I, listen, listen. God rained down hail on these guys. Big hailstones. And the God's help killed more of the enemy than the children of Israel killed with their swords. That's the kind of God you got on your side. That's the kind of God that you identify him with. That's the identity that you have. Look at it. Let's read some more. Let's read some more. I want you to drop all the way down to verse 19. And he says, stay ye not but pursue after your enemies and smite the hindmost part of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities for the Lord your God have delivered them into your hand. In other words, don't let your problems that's attacking you, don't let your situation dig in and create a, 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 a stronghold in your mind, getting you to believe that you're not going to make it getting you to believe that this thing is not going to explode and grow, getting you to believe that you can't do it, that you can't manage, that you can't grow it. Yes, you can. You got the divine touch of God all over. Let me look at you real quick. I'm looking at little stuff. Look at this here. He says, don't stay still. Don't get stagnant. But pursue after your enemies. Pursue after your dream. And you pursue, you, listen. What that means is, is that when Satan sends enemies into your situation, thoughts, fears, worries, anxieties, stressors, chase them things out your life. Pursue them with the name of Jesus and the word of God and rebuke them in Jesus name. Tell them you can't dominate me. You don't have no place in my life no more. And I am not in the condition of fear and respect for you, Satan. All right, all right, I'm trying to, okay. Look at this here. For the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. Now, this is a faith statement. You got to believe that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're dealing with, if the enemy is attacking you, God has already delivered them in your hands. You just got to act like the champion that you are, the warrior that you are, the more than conqueror that you are. You got to act like you are the head and not the tail. You got to talk like it, act like it, think like it, and behave like it. You got to act like you are above only and not beneath. You got to act like you are God's identity in the earth. You got to start acting like, we got to start acting like God has restored us and we've accepted that restoration package. That's how we getting down right now. And we got to explain to people, we ain't lost our mind. As a matter of fact, we've renewed our mind. We're not operating in arrogance. We are humble before our God. We would never take the glory from God. We would never take the glory of God. We'll give all the praise, glory, and honor to God. But I'm going to tell you one thing's for sure. One thing's for sure. We're not taking no static from Satan. We're not taking no static from Satan's kids. We're not doing that. No more. I'm telling you right now, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I didn't have enough of the devil acting the fool in my circumstances and situation. But God is a protector. Look at this here. Let's, let's, get, let's get these last two verses. These last two verses. Now, now watch what you see what God's been saying now in this Joshua chapter 10. And it can't look at verse 24. This is the one. I, I look, everything that I said, listening to the Holy Spirit to, to drop this at you, everything that I said comes down to this. It was all to get us here. If you can believe all of that, then believing this is going to be super easy. This is what God is doing in your life. God is with you. God is fighting for you, all right? God is developing you. God is working in you and doing miracles in you. God is fighting your enemies. God will change nature. He will alter nature. God was blessing you. God is strengthening you, and he's strengthening you to put your feet on all your enemies. Let's look at it here. Let's look at the scripture. Verse 24, Joshua 10, verse 24. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called all of the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him. I'm telling you, God calls you a warrior. This is Joshua talking to the warriors, his men. Come near. Watch this here. Pull them five kings out that cave. 
See, they, they, the kings went into that cave because they was hiding from Joshua. Joshua found out. They put a stone in front of the cave. They locked them in. They bound them up. And they couldn't get out until Joshua finished whooping up on all of their peoples. See, you got you got You can't just be fighting with the leaves and the fruit of the problems that you're facing. You got to go to the root and kill the root. See, if you just if you just kill off the leaves, cut off a couple of branches, it's going to still grow back because you haven't killed the root. You ever see a stump in the ground? It's got little, little it's, it's shooting up new sprouts of 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 stems and stalk and and leaves and all of that stuff. If you don't get the root, and I'm telling you right now, we that identify with Jesus, we that's got this identity restoration going on, we saying, I, I'm, I'm not going to be fighting this thing four and five times. I'm going to kill it at the root, deal with it once, and it's going to be done. That's the kind of attitude that you build it in God. That's the kind of faith you build it in God. Look at this here. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him. Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. This is what God is doing in your life right now. God is giving you through this identity restoration, the offer. He's making you the offer. The Holy Spirit's making you the offer. I'm gonna have you put your feet on the neck of fear. I'm gonna have you put your feet on the neck of poverty. I'm gonna have you put your feet on the neck of sickness. I'm gonna have you put your feet on the necks of depression and stress. I'm gonna have you put your neck, I mean your feet on the neck of your haters. I'm telling this is this is a total, this is a total identity change. This is a total identity expression. This is a total identity restoration. I'm so glad that God has revealed this to us. Look at this here. Look at this here. Verse 25. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Oh, man. I'm telling you, I'm, listen, God is saying this to you. Now, back then, Joshua, and they was fighting real people. All right. They had a real situation and circumstance going on. They had to fight folks. But you know what? We're not having, as Christians today, we're not having to fight, you know what I mean? five different kings from five different armies. You know, we ain't got to fight Putin and Jung Ming and, and, and you know what I'm saying? And, and, and any other, you know what I mean? A uh, 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 warrior or head of state and we fighting them. No, our fight is spiritual. Our, our fight, you know what I mean? It's a carnal fight dealing with, you know, carnality, our flesh inclinations, dealing with satanic forces. Dealing with Satan when he starts getting through and talking through people coming at us. Those are enemies to you. They may come as friends. They may come like, you know what I mean? Oh, we're going to have fun. This is going to be great. But deep down, they enemies from the enemy. They Satan's kids. They Satan's ploys. They Satan's wiles and tricks. And we, we with this new identity, we seeing things clear as day. And we're taking what God said to Joshua. Now, he was fighting real men. We fighting anxiety. We fighting fear. We fighting racism. We fighting classism. We, we're, we're fighting a whole bunch of stuff. We're fighting low self-esteem. We're fighting all of these enemies, these attacks from Satan. We're fighting poverty. We're fighting sickness. We're fighting all of these things that try to strip us of our place and our condition and our ownership in God. And that them days is over because God is with you. God is with me. God is with us. And God has given us identity restoration. Expect the hand of God to respond to your faith, to your praise, and to the truth that you speak into every situation, every circumstance that you deal with in every conflict that you have with Satan and whoever Satan sends to use as pawns against you to try to get you and convince you to drop your identity in Christ and pick up the identity of a coward, a failure, the identity of a loser. You are none of those things. You are more than a conqueror. You are a head of state. You are a part of the regime of God. And lastly, you have been restored back to your owner. God is your owner. God is my owner. And you know what? You own some stuff. 
You ain't just gonna let people just come in there and tear up your stuff. And God is not gonna let the devil and his kids come in there and tear us up. Let's trust God. Let's act it out like Joshua and the children of Israel back in that day, but we're gonna act it out today. Expect God's best because you are the temple of God. You have the truth of God. You've been touched by God. You got the touch of God and you got the talents of God. Everything that you put your hands to, God's breathing on it and making it shine. All right, my time is all gone. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life, Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm telling you right now, you pray it. If God says it's in the realm of possibility, then God can make it possible. Don't doubt God. Don't fear God. Don't fear the circumstances. Don't fear where you are in your position and in the condition that your situation is in. But look at God and say, God, I thank you that you are blessing me to put my feet on the necks of every enemy Satan sends against me. All right. Well, until next time, God bless you. Shalom.